Good afternoon, Nick Goldschmidt, <coughs> winemaker for Goldschmidt Vineyards, Forefathers in Boulder Bank. And here I'm going to talk a little bit about red wine fermentation. There's a couple of other little short videos that we've done. One was on maturity or picking from flowering to harvest. And then we did another one that was on site specific winemaking and making the correct decisions out of the vineyard and bringing that fruit in. I just want to cover a little bit about red fermentation that we touched on with that episode and I also want to talk about other alternatives. So we take a tank, a traditional tank, and the base of this tank is where the seeds fall out. The upper piece of the tank is where we have the cap, or these are where all the grapes sit. And then of course in the main piece of the tank we have the wine. The cap sits on top of the wine, but the most important piece is this piece in here where we have the highest temperature and the maximum extraction that occurs will be right here in this piece here. Typically we take wine from the top of the tank, uh, from the bottom of the tank and pump it over the top of the tank and we sprinkle it over the top of the cap and that mitigates the temperature issues that we have here and also extracts a little bit more colour and tannins that would otherwise be sitting in the cap and untouched. Another alternative method is what we call punch down. And this is basically where we have the same setup with the seeds in the bottom, the cap in the top, and the wine in this area here. Again, the hot part of the fermentation where the cap and the wine sit together. But instead of pumping over, what we do is we plunge or punch down. So we'll take a punch down device, and it could be pneumatic or it could be hand, and we'll actually push the cap down below the wine. And that's a way that we can mitigate the temperature again, plus we can also get more extraction out of the cap and the skins, etc. And there's a new technique that we're also playing around with these days and it's called pulse air. And what pulse air is, we'll take a large tube and we'll blow oxygen in this tube and actually form an oxygen pool under the cap and then eventually when the pressure gets enough, the wine will actually spurt out over the top of this cap or this cap will break up. And so this is another method that's also gentle. And this is typically done with thinner skin varietals like Pinot Noir, obviously, which is punched down. But we also use it a little bit with Merlot, Zinfandel, and other thin skin varietals that we find very fragile. We've been playing around a lot lately where we'll actually use the punch down device for the early part of the fermentation and the latter part of the fermentation. But when the yeast are fermenting very strongly and we don't want to put all that cap under there, we'll actually use this thing called pulse air. And the air will just pulse into the tank and then eventually it'll blow up over the top of the cap. And it's a really interesting technique. So the areas that we're most interested in is on the outside of the tank, you'll typically find, and if you look at a tank, that this area is actually under a jacket, and then you'll often find another jacket down in this area here. This jacket, or this rim that you see around the outside of the tank, is where we put cool glycol or cool water cold water to cool the, the fermenter down. And then this jacket here is often used for warming. So when we bring grapes in, it's typically, they're typically fairly cold and with Cabernet and Merlot and other varietals like that where we want to ferment on skins, we want to get this temperature up to a certain point that's healthy for the yeast. Because if we throw the yeast in there when it's too cold, the yeast will just die and they won't ferment. So we warm the tank up to an ideal temperature for the yeast and then once the fermentation, get, we'll add the yeast and once the fermentation starts getting going, we'll actually turn on this jacket to keep the temperature under really tight control. And we may want to ferment at up to 90 degrees or as cool as 75 degrees. And each one of these temperatures will vary the amount of extraction. I said in an earlier video that if we ferment at 90 degrees, we'll get really strong extraction. But if we ferment at 75 degrees, we'll get much cooler or much slower extraction. And again, the amount of pump overs that we give will also vary the amount of extraction that we give. If we pump it over a lot, we get a lot of extraction of the cap. If we pump it over only a short piece of time, we don't get too much extraction. So when we go out to the vineyard, how do we determine which one of those extractions we'll use? Again, another chart. I hope you don't mind. And this one may look complicated, but it's actually fairly easy to understand. When we go into the vineyard, we want to think about how those wines are going to taste. And on your tongue, 
In my mind, there are three types of wine that make a red wine complex. The first part of the tongue is what we call the elegant wines. These are the wines that are soft and berry fruit right up on front of the mouth. Wines that are very attractive when you first put them in your mouth. The next set of wines are what we call the powerful wines or the rich wines. These powerful wines are in the middle of the tongue. They have a lot of flesh and a lot of weight and that's where the big um, wines really sort themselves out from the little wines because if you can fill in as a winemaker, if you can fill in that middle palate, that's what's going to make that wine last as it goes through the mouth. And the last set of wines were what we call the dense wines. These wines have all the structure and the tannin on the finish. And when you have these three things together, this is what complexity is all about. So if we go out into the vineyard, and remember how I said our classic bloom to harvest time is around about 135 to 140 days. Well, that's very true. When we talk about elegant wines, these are the wines that are soft berry fruit wines right up in front of the tongue. We really want to extract those guys because they don't have a lot of tannin. And we find that the fruit is in higher concentration than the tannin. And this difference, this difference between fruit and tannin is quite large. And this is what drives us to pick at the 145 days. And we know that because fruit is higher concentration than the tannin, we can extract the bejesus out of it. We can really go for it and make those wines more powerful. Whereas a dense wine, so these are the elegant wines, these are the dense wines, we don't want the tannin and the fruit to get away from us too far. So this distance here is very small. So we typically pick these vineyards a little earlier. They may be around about 130 days from bloom to harvest. And when we bring these wines into the winery, we don't want to extract them so much. We'll only give them a low temperature during fermentation and short pump overs during that fermentation and then after fermentation is finished we'll actually warm the tanks up and that's what softens the tannins out. And then for powerful wines we typically find that the fruit and the tannin are about the right level and so we'll use some form of extraction in between that. So for an elegant wine we're really looking for strong extraction, for dense wines we're looking for less extraction and for powerful wines we look for something in between and we choose that by going into the vineyard, choosing the right site and then bringing them into the winery and really choosing the right winemaking or the site specific winemaking that we know will enhance the wine. So when we come back to blend one year later, we have wines that are elegant, we have wines that are powerful, we have wines that are dense, and that's what allows us to make the most complex wine we possibly can.